So as I mentioned, there are technical aspects to photography and there are artistic aspects to photography, but one of the difficult things For the last year or so, my landscape photography has been curtailed due to family reasons, as you know. And one of the things that I do on a daily basis is take said mutts out for walks. And when I take the dogs out for walks, what I decided to do last year was spend the majority, my majority, majority of my time in woodland. And uh, the reason for that is I am not good at taking pictures in the woods. I'm getting better, but I wasn't very good at it very easy with the big vistas it's a lot more difficult in the woods when you don't know what you're doing but it's easy once you do inspiration's a big one for me uh, as you know there is a famous youtuber at the moment called Simon Baxter and his little dog Meg not that little uh, who has inspired a lot of people to get out in woodland and I am one of them his stuff is awesome but there are other people out there that don't necessarily YouTube that I suggest you go and have a look at Dan Howarth who is on Instagram really really good um neil burnell who uh, uh i think won one of the sony awards this year uh, excellent woodland photographer and others lars van der gore excellent woodland photographer so there are plenty out there that can inspire you and in the description i'm going to put links to all those people uh, and i will put hyperlinks in because i got shouted out last time because i did put a hyperlink in and i will do that for you So when you're shooting, look for, or even when you're walking around, you don't necessarily need to have the camera out, look for little pockets of interest. For example, this tree is beautiful. It's not really gonna to work today because we have got that brightness behind us and the conditions aren't really conducive to shoot it today. But this is one I'm gonna notch down and think I know where that tree is. And when the conditions are right, I can come and take a shot of that tree. And why do I like the tree? I like the tree because it's interesting. And if you've got some interest as your highlight when you're in the woods, it makes for a nice shot. Other people might not like it, but you will. So a quick little bit of advice for you. If you're coming and shooting in woods, and uh, you want to make the image look as best as it, it can, unless the conditions are perfect, and what we mean by that is a lovely haze or a soft light, or even backlit may work, try and take the sky out of the shot. Even if that means in post-production that if you've got some little parts in the shot and you'll see this image now which will show it you'll see that there are little bits of white in the background and that can be off-putting and what it does is it draws the photographer it doesn't draw the photographer it draws the viewer into those white parts so don't be afraid of cloning them out when you get them into post-production or post-processing uh, it doesn't matter because it's your picture and if you clone them out nobody will notice and it'll vastly improve your image moment everything in this uh, woodland is dormant because we're heading from winter into an early spring uh, at, but there's not a lot of interest on the ground at the moment in time and this moment in time but looking at this shot here or the image here you'll see how in spring and summer the bracken comes up and completely transforms, tr transforms your shot. So you may come and scout out in winter, you may get some lovely intimate shots and some beautiful light wintry shots with the light, but if you come back a couple of months later, it's gonna look completely different. Might be a bit out of shot there. So the moral of the story is come back. Time and time again. 
I think the reason that people get put off in woods in general, and it's certainly the case for me, was all your compositional skills seem to go out the window and you try everything and get it to work and it just doesn't work. Sometimes that doesn't matter. If it's an artistic shot you want and something that's nice for you and other people to look at, sometimes you can just have an eaten mess like with this picture here. There's no particular composition to this picture that I can see, but for me it's just pleasing to the eye because the mess actually works. With shots that you want to bring some of those compositional elements into it look for something on the ground that leads you into the shot such as this shot that i took in lot lomond you can see that we've got the tree on the bottom of the frame that's leading us into the shot and uh, all that does is draws the viewer's eye into where your area of interest is and this one it happens to be the leaning tree and the trees that have fallen over in the mid-ground. Background is by the by. Certain conditions uh, mean that you'll get shots one day and when you come out you won't get shots another day and the conditions can actually make uh, an image beautiful or they can ruin the image. Uh, behind me you can see this tree here uh, over to my, my right. Don't know which side it is for you. <laughs> uh, but that tree looks nothing and if you look behind me over to this side you can see uh, a horrible building that used to be uh, some form of pumping station so we're in a relatively urban environment uh, even though there is woodland surrounding us and this place used to be a quarry and then was a landfill site uh, but the woodland surrounding it is ancient woodland and it's beautiful but just going back to this tree today in a million years, looking at the surroundings, you would think, well, I'm not gonna take a picture of that tree. But here is the same tree in the right conditions. And the conditions were a snowy scene with almost a whiteout, and it worked really well for a high key image. So you would walk past this today, but on another day, you may well use it as a shot. I've not fallen over at all and then I almost fell over and I almost lost my glasses which I can't lose because these aren't cheap. Um, I'm going to end the video here but uh, before I do, uh, just walking along, um, lovely little composition here that's going to possibly work in the future with the dry stone wall on the left hand side and that uh, path we're running along but that's it for another day. I'm going to end the video with a picture or an image that isn't mine and this is uh, from Dan or Danny Howarth who I mentioned earlier on. Uh, he uh, knows these woods like the back of his hand because he walks here almost every day with his dogs and other people's dogs and um, this actually featured uh, in the Landscape Photography of the Year book either last year or the year before I don't know which and it will just show you what potential you've got in the right conditions I haven't been exploring these woods long enough to get these conditions but Danny shows you it's a very simple pano shot from left to right, right to left and he showed me where he got the composition from and if you were two yards back it, the composition wouldn't have worked because of the trees in the foreground but he stepped forward uh, and got this image and it's a beautiful use of light and it also shows you when the light is nice and the growth within the woods is right because this was taken I would presume uh, in the height of summer or early summer when the bracken has uh, grown to its full potential. Beautiful use of subtle post-processing and a studying image to finish this video on. I hope you enjoyed it, uh, um, the video that is, <laughs> and if you do uh, give me a subscribe and if you don't, don't and uh, click the notification button because I'm not doing videos any week, every week anymore. Love you all. Peace. Mm -hmm.